Hey guys, my name is Alex Barham. Today we're going to talk about the Remix. Well, I'm sorry, wait, no, the RMX. Yes, is this boat a new Remix? Is it a race boat? Is it a surfboard? What's going on? It's definitely, when you first look at this boat, it's a good looking boat. You've got this fishtail thing going on, looks like a surfboard on the bottom. It looks fast, it looks hot, it looks like it's got a ton of rocker. The thing that you don't really notice until you put it next to a number of other boats is its parting line is really low. So the parting line is the point at which you have your deck, you have your hull, and they meet, okay? If you put this low, then when the water piles up against the side of the boat, it grabs your deck. If you put it high, then when the water piles up against the side of your boat, it slips under. This is very, very important when we talk about the RMX, okay? It's quite low on the RMX, and that's going to tell the story of the boat almost more than anything else. But before we go any further, one thing that we should talk about are the specs. Because they're wonky, uh, first of all, there's a 100 pound weight range for each size, which is just... Come on, man. Next thing is the volume. The volume, it, it just doesn't seem consistent that this boat, the medium, is 86 gallons when you put it next to other Liquid Logic boats. And then the length. The stated length for the medium is 9 foot 4 inches. My tape measure has it at 9 foot 5 inches and then some. So just generally speaking, you know, Give us the specs. Moving forward, uh, one thing that you'll notice almost off the hop is this thing's quick. It's blisteringly quick. You know, the team guys are running around telling everyone it's the fastest boat on the market. That may or may not be true because you're essentially playing with a bonus half foot, especially because it doesn't have quite as much rocker as a lot of the other boats in the market right now. So when you take away a little bit of rocker and you add a lot of length, you get a really fast boat. But you also are gonna start playing with fire because you're gonna have to trade some things away. So, let's talk about that. This boat, really, it does feel so much like a surfboard. When you go really fast and you're knee steering and you're in a rapid, really not even a rapid, just like a drop that feels like shoots and ladders, right? The whole thing is funneling, it's going in the direction that you wanna go and you're ripping out to a booth, dude, it's, it's amazing. It, it's super sweet. It just has these moments of sheer brilliance. And it's incredible that a boat that is effectively nine and a half feet booths as well as it does. Now that being said, I think you could basically take a saw and cut three inches off the back of this boat. Now you wouldn't have that really cool stern anymore, but you also wouldn't be grabbing so much. And what I mean by that is when you look at a lot of other designs that are out today, they basically have snubbed tails. And what this does is it gives them a much cleaner release coming off of things. So when you do land that really awesome drop, it's not uncommon to get your tail grabbed. Uh, so that is sort of the, the thing that goes back and forth about it. The other thing that you notice about this boat is that because it has these really long chines that are completely engaged and because it doesn't actually sit flat, the way that it sits in your stock photos that you're looking at online, it looks like there's a very balanced bow and stern rocker. The reality is even with the seat in the stock position, it actually rides stern down because there's less volume in the stern. So what that does is it brings that parting line that we already talked about being really low and it puts it right at the water level. And if you're at the top of the weight range, it puts it underwater. So that becomes a problem. This will manifest when you're doing things like crossing currents, trying to do bow draws, technical stuff, things where you're going slow. So a great example would be if there's a rapid where you've got to come up to a seam and you've got to kind of tiptoe along it and then turn like funnel on the moose 
like some stuff I did on the Ottawa, some stuff I did on the Petawawa. It just touches that seam, locks in, and you can't get it to let go. It feels a lot like the Zen 2 in that it just becomes a dog yanking on a leash. You're yanking it this way, it's yanking you that way. You're sort of just in a tug of war and you can't get anywhere because you have this really long chine that's just dug in. Now, when you can weaponize this chine, it does work really well. So doing big water moves where you're doing large left to rights or something like that, you can dig the chine in, get the boat up to speed, and it will just go, 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 go because it can bridge over more things. It can cut longer going up and over waves, and it really gives it a strong directionality. So there is a trade-off, but then you have to be ready to kind of compensate and deal with it on the back end. So it's not an intuitive boat to paddle. It's something you can learn to paddle, but it's not going to just do the same things the way that you're used to. You can't just jump into it. And that is where I think a lot of people are coming from when they look at this boat. The Remix, right, is a incredibly iconic, classic, popular Liquid Logic boat. It has really done incredibly well. And there are going to be a lot of people who are wondering, I love that boat, I love that design, is this gonna be just like a continuation of that concept? And the answer is no. They share a very similar name, but no, it's, it's not the same thing. Really, I, I hope they never stop making the remix personally, but it's not gonna be the same thing. If you're looking for something to stick a beginner in because that's the boat that you had and you loved, which is a lot of the reason why that boat has such a legacy. It's still going to be the remix. It's not really going to be the RMX. A beginner in an RMX is going to spend a lot of time grabbing edges on eddy lines and flipping. Now, the exception to this appears to be smaller paddlers. A number of small paddlers who I know really well, really trust, they are loving the nine footer, the small. This makes perfect sense. It's smaller, it's more manageable, it works for them. That being said, the people who are 140 pounds, who are well within the medium's low end, basically couldn't throw this thing around. It was way too much for them to pull around in significant amount of water. So I think that for some female paddlers, some small paddlers, the RMX small is definitely worth trying out and giving a fair shake. You may like what you find. Now, the things that I've been ragging on with this boat, I do want to say have a lot of potential if they are carried over into a half slice, which they were, two different designs. So I do think that while there are going to be some nagging tendencies in the RMX, if you're coming from the half slice versions and then you come into this, they will be much more intuitive. You will really actually like them because you're very at home with them. I do think that those boats, if they're based off of this, have a ton of potential to absolutely rip. They've got a big planning hall. They're going to surf. They're definitely going to have a low parting line, which means they're going to be easy to stern walk. And they're going to be built by Liquid Logic, which means they should be tanks. Now, before I go, I want to touch back on the stern. Very pretty, very cool, really refreshing to see a boat that is just that easy on the eyes. But the drain plug placement is just wrong. Uh, it doesn't work. If you stand the boat up on the fishtail, it goes half back in. So again, when it comes to me recommending this boat for beginners who are going to spend a lot of time emptying water out of their boats, it takes a while to drain this boat of water because it's basically half corked. I understand why it's there. It looks great where it is, but it should be on the deck where they all should be on the back left corner. And that's just unfortunate. But for the rest of this, you got logic outfitting, logic hard points, it's super solid construction, should last a really long time. It definitely is quick. Once you understand the quirks, it is fun to paddle if you 
are an advanced or an intermediate paddler and you're appropriately matched, but there are going to be some limitations on this design. If you are coming at this thinking this is going to be your new alpha or something like that, take a really good hard look because in person, this is an extremely different boat than the alpha. They do not really have much in common. The RMX has significantly less rocker than quite a few boats in its class, despite being so long. So really, you know, kind of think about that. Now, one of the things that it does incredibly well because it is so long and surfboardy is it surfs. Holy cow. From little green waves to big green waves, it eats it up. It's absolutely incredible. Now, kind of crashy waves where you're going to hit the pit, you're going to hit the pit sooner because it's longer, but there are always people out there who are looking for that boat that just takes care of you, carves green waves, it's comfy, this is it. This is really it. That would be kind of the standout thing that this does exceptionally well, besides be currently you know, maybe the fastest creaker on the market. That being said, for racers, remember, you are wildly over nine foot cutoffs. So if you've got a race organizer who's strict on nine foot, you're not gonna be able to race this boat. With sick line gone, I don't think there's a lot of sticklers left, but it is very important to be aware of. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you on the next one.